currently sitting. I don't want to be there. Um, I'm currently sitting on a, a Brooklyn Street floor. <laughs> um, let me grab the presentation. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, it's it's downloading. Um, I'm trying to open the file, so let's see. Oh, I can go into assignments. Okay. Here we go. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get it uh, downloaded, uh, uploading. Okay. Oh, no. I said go over the fight now. Um, I'm so sorry. It's still downloading. I don't know why. Uh, like uploading. Maggie, um, sorry. Um, Diana, it's probably because um, you're, I would guess because you're outside um, and not close to, you know, internet access. That would be my guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, uh, the other parts were working, so I'm just trying to get it up. I think it was also because I didn't download it on my iPad. It was on my computer, so I didn't download it before. Uh, so it was like trying to reopen itself. Um, Steven, do we want to switch order? And while Gianna's is downloading, which might take a little bit of time, we could go ahead and go. Maggie, is that OK with you? I can do that, yeah. Gianna, we're going to do that, OK? And you can go ahead and mute All right, yourself awesome. while it's downloading. OK. OK, let me just pull up my slides. <laughs> Can you guys see my slides? Yep. Looks good. All right. Give me one minute. Okay. All right. So hello, everybody. My name is Maggie Gray. Today, I'll be presenting about my capstone project that I've been working on this semester. And I've been working on creating a website to teach artificial intelligence concepts to students in grades, third, in, students in third grade to fifth grade. So I've been reading some of this um, explanation here. I've been incorporating student and instructor feedback to improve the quality of the site. I'll go more into that later in my presentation. So for some background context, artificial intelligence is such an important part of our lives and it's going to continue to become increasingly prevalent in our future as technology continues to develop and advance. You know, whether it's in our daily lives like Siri or Alexa or algorithms that decide what news or ads that we see, a lot of what we do is connected to artificial intelligence and jobs in the future are also projected to focus more than ever on data, data analysis, especially with the increase of information available, being able to analyze that data and information and utilize it to make artificial intelligence applications really, really important. So because of how important it is going to be in the future, it's really important that 
you know, we as a society develop a better understanding of what artificial intelligence is and how to safely and efficiently interact with it. And one, of, one good way to do this is to start teaching people from a very young age. And so currently of all the US computer science curricula for students in kindergarten to 12th grade, abbreviated as K to 12, only 30% include artificial intelligence in those curricula. So it's not a very high number. And so exposing children to these new concepts at a young age also will, in addition to helping them be more knowledgeable about the topic, it also can introduce them to a potential career field that they could go into down the line. Now, I personally didn't have much exposure to artificial intelligence until college. And I was very lucky to go to a high school where I was able to take computer science courses. And I was very lucky to have that opportunity, but I never learned much about artificial intelligence until college, you know, and it's not something that you really see in many elementary schools. So this project that I worked on this semester, it originally started as a class project uh, aiming to teach students in grades K to 12 about different kinds of models that are used in AI and how they vary from you know, very simple or to much more complex and powerful. There were a lot of issues with that original website. It wasn't grounded enough in existing research and the models were too big and complex and we couldn't actually run it on the website because it would take a couple minutes. And we also had way too broad of a scope because we didn't try to narrow it down to a specific grade. But you know, students in kindergarten are gonna have a very different understanding than seniors in high school. So for this capstone project, I decided to go back and improve the website, um, grounding it within more actual research and then shifting focus to providing students with a more foundational understanding of what artificial intelligence is instead of jumping in and teaching them about models right away. And I also narrowed the scope of the project to focus on students in third to fifth grade. So uh, the AI for K-12 initiative or artificial intelligence for K-12 is an organization that really aims to provide, to promote artificial intelligence education for students in grades K-12. They outline five big ideas as you can see here in this picture, uh, ranging, starting with perception, you know, how do computers perceive the world around them, representation reasoning, how do computers create representations of that data and use it uh, for reasoning and making decisions, learning how do computers learn from data, natural interaction, how do computers interact with humans and how what's involved in that. And last but not least, societal impact. How does AI impact society in positive and negative ways? So I use these guidelines in my website to sort of create the framework. There were three um, parts to creating this website. The first part was the structure uh, in which I used the framework from AI 4K12. I took the first four sections, the um, social impact, I decided not to incorporate into this website because um, it's such a, it's, it's a much more involved topic. And you know some students have been exposed to concepts of bias and unfairness and others might not have been exposed to the same, uh, to the same degree. And so that would, in order to have a conversation to teach students about that, it would need to be more of an in-person facilitation. And I would need more training as well, or people with more training facilitating these kinds of conversations would need to be involved. And then for the content of the website, I used resources from that website, AI4K12, and also resources from the Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence, or the AAAI, three days. Um, and you know, I looked through and found research or found curricula that had already, teachers had already used to teach students these concepts and tried to incorporate it into my website. And I also, for the supplementary materials, I really wanted to make this website interactive. And so throughout the site, I incorporated illustrations that I made myself and interactive quizzes. Students could actually do some of the exercises and you know, get some sort of interaction, get firsthand experience working with these things. I'll show you some examples of what I worked on. So this picture on the bottom left here is one of the illustrations I made. Uh, it shows the difference between sensing and perceiving. Sensing is just identifying that there is you know, some sort of sensory stimuli happening and perceiving is being able to actually understand what the stimuli is. So in this picture here, I'm showing how you know, sensing that there is sound is different than perceiving 
and understanding that you're being asked, give me directions to the mall. And it, for vision, you know, sensing is identifying that there's an object and perceiving is identifying, oh, this is three flowers inside a vase. And then on the upper right here is another picture that I use um, to illustrate how computers represent images um, through you know, creating a collection of pixels. And every single pixel has a unique color with an RGB value or red, green, blue value showing how bright the red, green, and blue are in uh, that one little pixel. And then on the bottom right here, this is an example of one of the interactive quizzes that I added on my website. Uh, you can see here, there's a picture of a dog in a decision tree. Does this animal have fur? Yes, no, ragged's tail, have feathers, all the way down. And then, so I'd be asking students to use this decision tree to try to identify what kind of animal this is. And it actually, this, this is an example of a decision tree that's not very good uh, because it's very limited. It only has four types of animals here. And so I, one of the questions shows a picture of a cat and asks students to identify the animal using the tree. And, you know, they're, they go through it and they see, you know, none of these options are right. And so, like this is an example of, I show how, you know, sometimes these models aren't always the most accurate and you have to like keep that in mind. So because I was, excuse me, because I was working with a sensitive population, uh, students who are children younger than 18, I had to get IRB approval. And so I got, went through the whole process of creating consent forms, assent forms, um, you know, outlining exactly what I was going to be doing. And so this survey is the final product that I came up with. And this survey, I wanna show this survey to students before and after they look at the website. So I'm, this survey, I'm really trying to gauge three things. I wanna gauge, you know, how interested the students are in this topic, how clear or easy they thought the website was to understand, and if they enjoyed using the website to learn about the topic. So this is just one of the questions uh, on the survey, you know, on a scale of one to five, how interested are you in artificial intelligence? And they answered this question before they look at the website and after. So I actually have not yet been able to um, get in contact. I have a, I have some, I got connected with the RIT kids on campus and the director Craig Farrell helped me get connected with an instructor in the local area that I will be working with, you know, to give this form, give this survey and show the website to these students, but I have not yet been able to actually make it happen. So that is something that I plan on doing in the next few weeks uh, to really, I want to incorporate these student and instructor feedback to improve the quality of the website. Now I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of the website. I don't know if you guys can see. This is an example. This is the homepage of the website. Uh, you know, when they first go on the website, you see these different categories here. Uh, these are the, five, the four of the five big ideas that were outlined in the AI for K-12 uh, program. So I'm gonna go into perception here. You know, I have all these illustrations and I really had to be very mindful of you know, the vocabulary I was using to make sure it was very, to make sure it was easy for a third grader to understand. And so I have here, like I highlight, um, you know, certain important words that they should know and definitions of those words and um, have these explanations and all these images here. So, yeah. So this here is a picture, an example of how, you know, a computer would look at a scene and when it's just sensing, you know, it sees that there's different things, but it doesn't know what it's looking at. Uh, but then a human would be able to perceive and look at the picture and see all the different things going on and come to a conclusion using outside knowledge. So this is the picture I showed. And then the second page here, representation and reasoning. Excuse me. Um, you know, going into how computers store sentences, how computers, right, how they store sentences as sequences of numbers, and then how they store images as, again, um, collections of different numbers. Uh, so it's very much, and then this is an example here of 
the quiz that I originally had. So, you know, it shows a picture of a dog. It still needs a bit of fine tuning, but this is essentially the website that I have created so far. It's not 100% complete. I still have to add some fine tuning to the last few pages, but you know, this is what I have. So we'll get back to my presentation. So, so future steps is I want to complete all the fine tuning and really, you know, finish all the content for the website. I still have the very last website. I have a couple more categories. I still have to fill the last page. I have a couple more categories. I still have to fill out. And I also want to uh, move forward with getting the instructor and student feedback to improve the content of the website. And so that wraps up my presentation for now. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Om, my capstone advisor, and Dr. Aldersley as well for your help during this. And I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Craig Carroll from RIT's Kids on Campus for helping me get connected with local instructors. Um, thank you, Maggie. Um, let me begin by asking you, do you, or do you now have IRB approval? Yes. Great, great. Because as we talked about uh, uh, at the beginning and, and as the semester has progressed, I, I think it will be important to, to actually field test it, right? I mean, right. uh, it'll be very important to see both what the instructors uh, or instructor of, the, of that grade, um, th third through fifth grade, how the instructor feels about it, and then, of course, how, how the children uh, do. Uh, but let me ask you this. Why did you settle on third to fifth grade? I mean, what made you think that that was the, the, right, the right age group? <laughs> so that's a very good question. I honestly, because um, I, I felt like I wanted to create content that was more geared toward a younger audience because you know, I feel that of the existing content, like a lot of it is geared towards older students who are, or students who, you know, might already be able to have the same foundational understanding um, that they would be able to understand some of the more complex material out there. So I wanted to create something a bit more um, geared towards younger, something a bit more simpler and geared towards a younger audience. Um, I specifically chose third to fifth grade because the kindergarten to second grade, there were a couple of grade bands. It was kindergarten to second grade, third to fifth grade, um, sixth to eighth grade, and then ninth to twelfth grade. These were um, the AI for K-12 organization actually split up these different grade bands and had different guidelines set up for each of these different grade bands. And K the kindergarten to second grade grade band really was not enough content to really substantially make an entire website. And so that's why I ended up sticking with the third to fifth grade. You know, I so third grade um, is like eight-year-old, nine-year-old, so it's really eight-year-old through ten-year-old, ten right? Is that approximately what it is? So I, I, you know, if I was assigned this project, I, I would not know the language level of those of, of students at that age. So, right. are you confident? I mean, where you had to design this website, so you use language in the website. How are you confident that that's language that is appropriate for that age? I mean, how do you know right. that? So the, the guideline in the guidelines that are outlined by the organization, AI for K-12, they actually specifically talked about, you know, certain concepts that should be introduced. And I made sure some of the concepts were not introduced until the nine to 12 level. And so I tried to, you know, steer clear of those and really focus on what was introduced in the K-12, in the kindergarten, the second grade and third, fifth grade level and use some of the similar language that they were using in um, the examples. But also that is one of the limitations of the project is that I am, you know, I don't have a lot of experience working with eight to 10 year olds. And so when I'm getting instructor student feedback, the first thing I wanna do is show this to the instructor and get their feedback because I feel like the instructor is really, they're gonna have the best understanding of what their students are gonna be able to handle and right. the kind of information that they already know. And so you've already hooked up, you've already got an instructor's name that you've already got that agreement with to, 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 to field test this with a, a particular instructor? 
I have the name of an instructor. Um, I still am waiting on somebody to get the actual contact information for the person, but I have somebody who has said that they would be willing to do it. I've been working with Craig Farrell um, and he's been, he has, he had asked a couple of teachers that he knew. Okay. All right. Well, I, I hope that, uh, I mean, there's only two or three weeks left of the, of the semester. It, I think you'll be fortunate to, to have gotten that far by the time of the, certainly by the time of the symposium, that's only like nine or 10 days away. But I, I you know, I think, I think your, your, the question that you've tried to answer or, or, or you're working on is excellent. Um, I, and I hope that beyond this, beyond this semester, you'll continue to work on this because this is not the sort of project that you can go, okay, it's done. I mean, that's not, it's not that sort of project. So I, I, are you gonna continue to work on this even if you haven't finished it in the course of the semester? Yes, so I will be, you know, I'll be coming back for graduate school in the upcoming fall. And so I would like to try to just see this at least to getting student and instructor feedback. And then I think once I get that wrapped up, you know, then, so to answer your question, yes, I do wanna to try to continue and get that okay. instructor student feedback. Is the program you're going into, is that Dr. Alm's program? Yes, or yes, at RIT. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, thanks very much, I enjoyed that. Um, and Meg? Thank you. Yeah, thanks Maggie. Um, this is really interesting. So, you know, prior to working in uh, college athletics and then ending up at RIT, I was a K through 12 teacher in English. So I, I, I really commend you on um, a project of this scope and the age range that you're looking at is a unique age range for sure. Um, and I, I think that this project would only benefit from you getting probably a team of teachers, a team of teachers right. at age range that could not only provide guidance on language. Um, and it sounds like there's the, the concept piece you've incorporated, but it would be great if you could get some feedback on language and also the layout of the website, because I would imagine that um, how uh, eight through 10 year olds engage in a website, it looks very different than how we do it. So I, I think that would be really valuable for this project. Um, so my that's commentary. My question is, um, professionally, what are you looking to do? Um, so I understand you're going into graduate school, but I'm not sure what specific area and what your goals are. And I'd just love to hear about that. Okay, so um, Seth, thank you for your feedback. I definitely would love to get a team of instructors. Uh, I really had just aimed for one classroom for the scope of this project, but you know, getting more feedback would really be something that could really help this project a lot. Um, and to answer your question about grad school, I'll be going into master's program in data science and I'll specifically will be working with Dr. Alm in her um, aware AI program uh, that focuses specifically on, you know, artificial intelligence and, you know, really providing an interdisciplinary approach to learning about artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, so as for what exactly I want to do after graduation, I'm not, I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, but I do see, I, I do see education as a potential route, but, you know, I'm still really trying to figure it out. But as of right now, you know, data science and artificial intelligence are, you know, interests that I've really been pursuing. And I also really like just, you know, teaching people things and, you know, making things easy to understand. So I feel in some way teaching will probably be a part of my future, but I'm not sure in what capacity. Right, well, that was, uh, that was excellent. And what better way to learn more about a topic than to teach it? Um, so yeah. I really commend you. This was uh, a great project and I look forward to hearing more about it at the symposium and also reading your papers. Thank you. You're muted. That's right. Okay, sorry. Are there any more questions? No? Well, thank you very much, uh, Maggie. And we will go back to Gianna. And um, hopefully, she has succeeded in uploading her presentation. Gianna?
Yes, I got it now. Um, I just am trying to find the right thing to hold my laptop up. Okay. Um, I do have it. Let me just share the screen with me. Okay, so you're able to see my screen now? I think you muted. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, we can see the first slide now. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, okay, so I originally started RIT as a mechanical engineer. And then from mechanical engineering, I wanted to do something more hands-on. And I ended up in packaging science, and which I thought was really, really cool. And I still love today. But Honestly, I was really upset that I was done with my math and science classes and I wanted to learn more. And also with the pandemic and everything, I realized I really wanted to go into more of being able to make a difference in the world and uh, making it a better place. Ever since I was little, I've always been into um, helping others and always thinking of others before myself. So. With that being said, and with the pandemic happening, I uh, decided that nursing would be a better path for me than with packaging science because I'd be able to see the difference I'm making and help people. Um, with that being said, um, I also, oh, um, I have been in uh very many different uh, leadership roles of watching children of all ages. Um, I was a counselor, I babysit and I nanny with all of that because I love working with children. So definitely when I go into nursing, I wanna go into pediatrics. Um, with that being said, right now I am currently watching or I, uh, I watch these three boys and it made me realize that um, for my capstone project, I'm going to focus on parenting and the relationship you have with your nanny or with uh, your babysitter or whoever is watching your children. Um, so in the past, uh, in like the 1900s and before, um, most families were consisted of two parents, a mother and a father, and the mother's resp responsible um, to for the household and for their children. So they were the stay-at-home moms. While the fathers were expected to be the breadwinners, they were the man of the house and um, made the money. So with that, you had a parent home all the time to raise them, help them with their homework, uh, do all the extracurriculars and be there all the time. Um, also in that time area, it was more common that it was a one person can make enough money to support the entire family. Whereas now today, um, families are consisted of many different combinations where there's um, a single parent or if they're divorced or a stepmother and stepfather um, or being raised by someone else. And also with the economy, economy today, um, many families have both parents working full time to be able to uh, 
uh, support the family and provide for everyone. So with that, who is um, who is going to take care of the children, especially if they're very young? Because um, when they're older, maybe you'll give them the responsibility of taking care of themselves or staying home alone. But when you have children under the age of 10 or five or even infants who's there to watch them, you're always at work. And you can't just rely on babysitters all the time because they don't um, they don't discipline as a parent would and if you're always absent um, there's no one to help raise them and become and teach them everything that they need to know since uh, at a young age it is very crucial to teach life lessons uh, tell them what's right and wrong and everything so different options people usually go with are having friends or family watching them having a babysitter or if they have older children they may give them the responsibility to take care of them and with that being said um with that being said though they're still children themselves. So the family I watch, there's five of them. One, the the oldest girl is 17. The other, the boy is 14. And then the three others are two six-year-olds and an eight-year-old. And the brother and sister have had so many more responsibilities than probably any other 14 or 17-year-old has had in their life. Um, they miss out on a lot of opportunities to be a 14 year old or a 17 year old. They can't go out and hang out with their friends or do some extracurricular activities because they are, uh, they are expected to stay home and watch the children because the parents can't, aren't home, they're at work. And some families can't afford a nanny or someone else to watch them um but when you have other kids who are just raising younger kids they don't even know everything themselves they're still learning everything so it's so much harder to have that and be a sibling and have so much responsibility and put so much discipline and require so much out of the other children um you have to they don't really look up to them as authority more as a big sister or big brother so with that um you you're gonna probably ask for someone else for help to watch your children and with that though if you ask a neighbor or a friend or a babysitter or a nanny they will do the best that they can, but they still kind of have that awkward feeling of what they're allowed or not allowed to do. Um, what are the boundaries of disciplining or teaching them lessons? Because they may do something wrong and you may just let it go. But if your parents are never around to tell you that it's right or wrong, and the people watching you just let it go you're never going to know it's the wrong thing to do and there's no one there to have that discipline to have that teaching of lessons because it can't always be on the school as well um so that's also the downsides of having someone else you can't be there to know what they're saying or have complete control you can kind of tell them um there's uh maybe they'll let go of the responsibility responsibilities that the children should be doing or have because you know it's the babysitter and oh you don't have to do your chores today but if no one is 
uh, requiring it. There's no structure and kid, uh, a lot of kids need structure at least at a young age and then build from there. So um, finding the right person to watch your children is very, very difficult because you're trusting them with your children who are your life and they're everything. So you don't want to find someone who will treat them or be too harsh. You have to um, have that trust level. Also with strangers, you may not know them as personally, so you don't know they're growing up or how they would react to different events or actions. Um, you want to be able to know that the person watching your children want what's best for your children and put them as top priority instead of um, being on their phone or just letting them do whatever they want and not having structure or supervision. Um, so the solution that I thought of was a plan of some sort. So it can be either physical or it could be um, digital, um, technological in like an app form, a way that parents and whoever the caretaker of the children are, have it be family, friends, uh, a nanny, babysitter, have a outline of things that kind of talk about each topic and what is, what is required or expected from every party, the kids and the, uh, the, the kids uh, and the babysitter or nanny. Um, it can go, it can be as simple as just saying things that have to be done of like chores and school and uh, dinner, or it can go into more detail of uh, explaining what punishments are and not allowed, what behavior is allowed or not allowed, what rewards they should get, what punishments they should get, because that's probably the biggest thing that um, as a babysitter or a nanny or watching someone else, you never know how to discipline, especially if you're a family friend and you have kids, they may not be the same views as your own children. So having something that kind of lays out the family's dynamic and how they want it to be will help them um, gauge of what is uh, what is appropriate or not. Um, and then also in if it's in an app, you can definitely um you can definitely do um a part of it where there's messaging or posting of different ideas or comments so kind of like texting but if you're busy throughout the day if you just post it or a comment you have or a question, it could get answered anytime you want. Or if it's just something you remember, you could put it up and then it won't get lost in the whole text or conversations that you have. It just is very easy to navigate. Um, so it, even if it is an app or just a binder or a folder, it will help break down everything that is expected of the parents and expected of the children or the people watching them. Because if you don't have that clearly written out and explained in detail, it can be interpreted very differently. And with that, um, 
the parents may not always be available to talk to or uh, contact. And so then you're kind of like stuck in the middle of, am I allowed to say that? Or am I allowed to let them do that? You don't know. And so in this case, it will be easy to find the right answer if you're in that situation of not knowing. Gianna, um, you have one minute left to uh, finish your okay. presentation. <clears throat> awesome, no problem. Um, so those would be, um, that would definitely help the parents have that trust and um, uh, ease of mind for the people taking care of their kids and vice versa, knowing that everything they're doing is okayed by the family. Um, and that's it. Okay, th th thanks, Jana. Um, th I, I think this is a very uh, important and certainly interesting topic. Um, I know my uh, my son's family, my son's uh, wife uh, and his wife had a, a baby now um, uh, now going on two years old. Um, and I know they've struggled to find a nanny that uh, that uh, they felt they could trust and 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 would uh, behave in the way they would hope she would behave. And they've had a couple, and they they certainly interviewed a lot, um, and so and they had fairly uh, you know the, they set the bar pretty high for somebody that they would trust with their firstborn, and right now they they have one that they like. But a lot a lot of what you've said, um, <laughs> you know, I don't think you can, I don't think writing something down and saying this is what you've got to do is sufficient. I mean just because you wrote it down and just because the nanny who, as you rightly point out, you don't know to begin with, has said, yes, I understand that. You, you don't know that they really do understand it or mm -hmm. if they understand it, they're really going to act that way. So it's a very difficult, uh, it's, a very, it's a very difficult challenge to find somebody that um, you are ready to trust your children with when you're out of the house. Uh, you know, I didn't see any evidence in your presentation that you've actually done any research on this. Did, 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 well, I had... did. I just didn't add it um, onto this presentation. It is in my um, the report part. Can you briefly describe the research that you did? Um, so I was researching different... Um, I was uh, researching the different st statistics of families that do rely on two parents working and um, how many that have to uh, find a, a, an alternate solution of watching their children. And then how the different um, stats on how those, how that works out and then also how um, it may affect their growing up. So uh, for example, if a sibling has to raise their child, how that might affect them as in um, maturing faster or being on their own a little differently and stuff like that. Okay, well, as I say, I think this is a very important topic. So I'm glad that uh, that you've done some research on it, and uh, I look forward to seeing uh, seeing you at the at the uh, symposium where we can learn more about uh, what you've done here. So, Meg. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Stephen. So I would echo his um, sentiments. Um, I've got three kids, and um, and while they are nowhere near the age where they need a nanny. Um, you know, I certainly remember my quest to find someone that I trusted and how important that is. So I'm wondering, can you talk a little bit about the, maybe the new learning that has happened through this process? Um, and I'm glad to hear that you are gonna plan to incorporate some, some research into this. Um, I yeah. do think there's a, a, a portion of this you know, open communication is key. Absolutely. Um, can you talk a little bit about maybe some new learning that you've gathered through this process? 
Um, definitely experiencing it firsthand while doing this project definitely gives me a different uh, uh, sight and vision towards everything because you can, as much as you can like plan and think this is what would happen when you're actually in it and you have one child misbehaving and crying and the other two wanting to go get ice cream you're not knowing what to do because you want to discipline one but the other two aren't and then you're not sure if your disciplining is too harsh or not harsh enough especially if they're very very young um and then like you don't want to also call the parents all the time and basically interrupt their work and then there's no real point in watching them if you're always on the phone with the, the parents so as um uh so as stated before um it's not going to be just like a written statement or anything like that it'll kind of be broad but then um as time goes on different um, notes or add-ons will be put in to um, to edit and change things as they grow or um, include certain ways that may work or may not or if as um, as the person who's watching the children come up with some uh, ways or um, notice certain things happening they could also write that down and just so it doesn't have to be all in this in secret or not communicated with each other um so for little things that occur during the day that maybe you don't have to talk to the parent right away but may have to be brought up you can write down or um take note of it so then you also don't remember because when you have three kids running around you may forget everything. <laughs> um, okay. Well, thanks. Well, I look forward to seeing your report and and seeing the research and and seeing the um, specific product that you're developing. So, thank you. Um, are there any other questions from anybody? Um, hearing none, then we will uh, move to. Uh, close this session and um, thank you both for your presentations and um, um, we will look forward to seeing you in what what is it today maybe it's nine days to the symposium I think it's nine or ten days so uh, uh, we will look forward to getting your posters uh, please get them in in a timely fashion so that Meg can uh, do her magic and and have them transformed into um, the, the the correct format and we will see you in uh, nine or ten days so thank you very much again. Great job and good luck wrapping everything up. We're proud of how hard you're working to get things done. So have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye.